Beautiful. So welcome. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. My beautiful guest today is Denny Reno. Did I say that right? That's perfect. Yes. That's good. Denny is an abstract um, expressionist artist, an intuitive guide and facilitator. She's a super interesting woman, a co-creator <laughs> of Soul Paint Retreats and Workshops. Soul Paint helps artists and those wanting to tap into their creativity to uncover what may be preventing them from creating not only their best art, but also their best life. Uh, Denny is also uh, trained in intuitive art, art therapy, energy healing, meditation, chakra clearing, shamanic journeying, archetypical processing, and has been facilitating workshop circles and retreats for the past five years. So I think we're in for a really, really interesting and juicy chat. So welcome, Denny. Thank you. Thanks, Crystal. It's lovely being here with you. So where to start? You're such an interesting, <laughs> artistic, creative person um, that I'm so looking forward to, to diving in and seeing where we end up. Um, shall we talk about soul paint first? Because that's what um, really intrigued me about you. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. I probably... Um... I kind of I think I came at my art from a slightly different area than a lot of artists that I know out there in that um, uh, I start when I picked up the brush again and, and started creating I um, did it as a way of understanding more about myself than an actual actually wanting to create um, beautiful paintings mm -hmm. for others or wanting to sell them at all it was more of a self-expression and a needing to um, um, release and I would release onto canvas so that feeling of just kind of letting go and um, uh, not having judgment around around your art that came to me very naturally because that's how I started mm -hmm. um, and then I realized that because um, I did a lot of different modalities healing modalities a lot of self work you know um, finding out more about my inner world um, and the art then became such a beautiful place for others, you know, whether they were painters or artists or creatives or just wanting to um, find out more about their, their, their inner world. I found that the canvas really gave a kind of a gentle way mm -hmm. of exploring, um, exploring that side of the brain or allowing um, emotions to come out, um, finding blocks um, in a completely different way, way, one that you can't get lost in your in in your um, rational mind. Mm. So, um, so soul paint um, came about through that, um, through me kind of collecting um, through a lot of the different modalities I had um, used before, um, and some of them were quite um, quite emotional and quite a release. Um, and I found that the art just gave a a nicer, more gentle way of reaching these places. Yeah. So yes. I always find that, you know, um, anything with art therapy, painting, creativity, it bypasses our busy little mind and let, allows us to tap to that deeper information that's within us. Um, in a, I like the way you say very gentle way because it is. I always call it magical because you've got no idea how the answers are going to come to whatever you're exploring or what's going to come, but something amazing always comes. And often it's, people are aware when it comes out. It's like, oh, yeah, I did kind of know that. And other times it's like a big surprise what comes out. Um, absolutely. And there's um, so the process that I do goes over seven layers on two canvases. Yeah. And so you really don't know where it's leading. And at the end, the what you can read in these pieces, mm. is it's, it's quite amazing really it surprises yeah. me every time yeah 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 so seven layers over seven days or what's the time frame well it depends I've done um uh I, so I have a creative partner Danielle Wright as well um and we've done retreats together so that will be over two or three days um yeah. so we do seven layers over two or three days I've um, held workshops where I'll do them over seven weeks and they'll come one day a week yeah. um the online one that we've got now is over seven weeks yeah. but that said because it's online and there's lots of of different time changes and people coming on we've um, designed it in a way that you can self-pace yourself and um and then have q and a's every week for for anybody who needs that extra that, bit of understanding support. yeah, yeah. And, uh, support and also to be able to process it out loud and to be witnessed in that i think is also a really powerful part of the whole um yeah art process 
It is. And so we have a Facebook group that's, you know, it's closed and it, it is, the, the, the groups tend to be smaller, so they mm. get quite intimate and you actually get to know um, the other participants quite well. And it's that sharing that really takes it to a different level. Yeah. Being witnessed, the power of being witnessed is, is huge, I think. Um, and I remember when I asked you how many participants you had, I loved your answer because you do keep the group small and intimate. And I think that is so important for real connection. Um, because a lot of online things, like we met during um, uh, through Find Your Joy, Louise Fletcher's online art, which is an amazing platform. But, you know, over a thousand women, huge amount of women there. So. Yeah, I mean, it does, I mean, it's beautiful and that's the way it is. But um, I think there's something to be said about a, a, a smaller, more intimate group. I mean, I've run women's circles for years. I take women out into land at Uluru in the middle of Australia and, and, and done a lot here in, in Sydney. And um, just a group of women, you know, when it's it is sort of in those smaller numbers, it's that's the the magic when you can share and as you say I mean I think of myself as a witness that just that just that mm -hmm. um, because um, it's so powerful to have somebody see what you're going through or just be there to mm -hmm. um, to to see and to you know nothing else really I mean mm -hmm. I think we all heal ourselves and just being witnessed is so powerful yeah holding space for another is a real privilege I feel in life when we're doing that deeper inner work and having that sacred space, you know, win a circle of women, whether it's face to face or whether it's online, it works both ways, but in different ways, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So I'm just looking at some of the beautiful paintings we can see um, in the background there. Your <laughs> art is so full of life and colour and movement. So just talk to me. Tell me about, about your painting. Yeah, well, I... I... I, I like to think of it as um, this um, this cross between I, I, I ride this wave of too much or not enough. <laughs> and so the, the art goes through the, the uh, quite often they start and I think of them as too much because I, I love lots. <laughs> and so I put on a lot of movement, a lot of colour. Um, and I think in life I can be a little bit like that too. And um, it can be a little bit... Um, I think that when I learnt that um, you needed to have space for people to really hear the things that, that you wanted them to hear rather than I grew up with um, in a family of nine kids. Wow. And so to try and be heard, <laughs> you had to speak a lot <laughs> or loudly and to learn that, you know, that actually people don't listen when, when you're talking too much and to actually, you know, the, the beauty of listening. Um, I think that's what I put into my work now is that there's, there's got to be that balance that um, the quiet places so that the loud can really scream. Mm -hmm. And so there's this constant tension between the two um, and allowing the space for the really loud bits to, to, yell at you yeah. in some way yeah. yeah well to be visible really to speak yeah so the message is clear mm, absolutely mm. and I think that there is probably an influence with um with my love of land and um the harshness of the land I mean the Australian outback is quite harsh but also incredibly gentle at the same time so there is I think um a bit of that the the nature um more the Kind of energetics of the nature than actually using land as a um, visual, um, um, the visualness of the land coming into my paintings. I think it's more the energetics of it that come mm. into my work. Mm. Yeah, so we'll move into uh, talking about the land next. But one of the um, first things I think you said to me in our first conversation was that you always put a bit of ugly and beauty into your paintings and that just tickled my fancy because I'm all about beauty everything has to be perfect everything has to be feminine lovely and pretty and it's like I've really that's really sat with me it's like I've challenged myself could I put a little bit of ugly in my my embroidery work it's like mm, no <laughs> no not there yet <laughs> I'm not there yet so please let's chat about yeah. the ugly and the beauty and the beauty of those two coming together in one painting uh, yeah well it's the contrast isn't it and there's something I don't know I, this this is an exploration that I have in um finding um too much lightness um in 
beautiful things Mm -hmm. and it's I'm 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 a shadow worker I love Mm -hmm. the you know getting into the really deep dark stuff so I'm constantly also you know with that too much and not enough there's also this feeling of of wanting to show it all you know we're we're not just these light beautiful characters we've all got these depths to us and um, I've always been about discovering that in life not just in art but in myself wanting to to delve into those places that a lot of people kind of try and hide mm. um or you know they 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 push away they don't want to see those parts of themselves but but for me there's so much to be gained in those areas so i love bringing that up in my art as well it feels more um interesting Mm. um to have those those bits so if it's looking too pretty I'm likely to get something out and and scrape at it or do something throw something completely off the wall at it to to bring out this other side yeah see I love that and it terrifies me all at the same time (laughs) but when you were speaking I you know the word balance came to mind it's like it's really being an authentic expression instead of, you know, the glossy expression that we are all uh, conditioned to put on social media. It's more real. It's authentic. There's always light and dark within everything, within all of us. And it's um, it's so refreshing to see someone, you know, as we do, you know, who does show up and is real. I mean, I think, you know, where we met with Louise Fetcher, it's probably why I was mm. attracted to her work was that I loved that she um, is happy to show those those bits of herself yeah. and I think uh, um, that that's what resonates with me as someone that's being very real and is willing to expose not only the beautiful but also that those those more um, darker uglier parts of life and um, that are it, you know that are very real that we all have so um, it's nice to to um, see that and that in itself is permission for everyone else to be more that like that I believe yeah I agree I think that's so true um and I think as a highly sensitive person I always had to have that mask on to interact with the world um and many years ago a beautiful wise woman said to me you know crystal there is such strength in showing your vulnerability and that Mm -hmm. really really impacted me at the time it was like oh no I couldn't possibly do that but over the last probably 15 years as I've learned to share that When I am vulnerable and really real with other people, it opens a space of connection that I've never experienced before. So when you've got the mask on and the facade and you're just, you know, projecting, you you think you're doing the right thing, but Mm. you're actually not really experiencing true connection with somebody. Yeah, Yeah. and that's where um, I think the work that I've done with women's circles, they just that, that uncovering piece and also with the soul paint, because that's what it's about is each layer. It's about expressing yourself, however it is in that moment. So each layer you're, you're sort of guided through different colors that take you through a different energetic place in your body where you could be um, holding onto um, um messages that you may have received in childhood or from a teacher or just things that you're telling yourself Um, and so what we're trying to do is is paint them out and that can be quite ugly and confronting so just allowing that to be for the for the canvas to be ugly and not to have judgment is part of the process because you usually find that that's something that you're doing in life not just in your creative process so it just gives you a little in into where you may be um stopping yourself in life in different ways that's beautiful and I um what I hear in that is it's not only is it as a releasing and a becoming conscious of the patterns that are, you know, limiting beliefs or old patterns that are still playing out, um, but a letting go of conditioning, you know, oh. a reprogramming into wholeness, into oneness without carrying all this, yeah, those old limiting beliefs and patterns that inhibit all of us, both in our artwork that is then reflected, um, reflected into our lives. Yeah, I think that it's it's there's such sticky things because I don't think that we know how much conditioning we all live with. Correct. You know, we're, yeah. we're, it's it's been there for so long and it's programmed for so long. Mm-hmm. And just the kind of society and um, that we live in these days, it's it's, um, it's I call it an unbecoming because it's like t- stripping away all these rules and all these yeah. regulations that actually don't make any sense. Yeah. 
yeah. you know who's actually who's actually telling us that this is the way to be yeah. and when you really strip them back then you realize god you know right from little we've been told these things yeah um, and they're not true. <laughs> they're simply not true. Yeah. I know right now, um, for the last year or so, particularly as the world is changing, um, as I'm seeing each layer of my conditioning come up to be released, it's like sometimes I'm very aware of it. And other times, just in the way we speak, you know, the words that we use, and it's so subtle and it's so ingrained in us that we don't even realize until we begin to question. Um, and I know that you are an amazing astrologer. And so should we just quickly delve into, you know, this whole um, energy around thinking for ourselves, you know, starting to, yeah, instead of relying on that top-down authority, being sovereign and starting to really work out what's right for me, what's right for yeah. Crystal, what's right for Denny, you know, not yeah. what we're told is right for us. Absolutely. And that, you know, there's, there's, um, there's a, a planet up there, Uranus, and that's the rule breaker. Mm -hmm. And I, I um, very much relate with being the rebel, not following the rules. Um, I think, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I, I was um, born into a family of four girls, and then there were four boys, and then there was me. So I wow. lived with my four brothers growing up. And I think that um, I was constantly fighting this, um, um, idea that it was different for me than it was for my brothers mm -hmm. um, and so with that from such an early age I was always um, trying to break the rules mm. of what people told me I could do mm. or couldn't do um, and that's just stuck with me ever since then I mean I guess at times that's one conditioning that I possibly need to I know that the structure um the the Saturn who is more of the structure and the way things have been sometimes I need a little bit more of that in my life because I can get a little bit too um unstructured yeah. um because uh, it's got to be a balance right it's always a balance between the two yeah, um, but yeah. that's the two planets that that sort of are very big right now mm. and have been all through 2021 is Saturn and Uranus which is the um, rule maker and the rule breaker mm. and I think we're all feeling that not just within ourselves but also on this planet at the moment that the um, where we're trying to rebalance and um and change the way it's always been to be something different. Mm. Um, so it feels quite, um, it's been a big couple of years, huh? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, I was going to use the, the word battle between uh, Saturn and Uranus, but I, I don't like that word. I like dance because it's, you know, this kind of, it's, it's a constant movement. And for me, it's day to day, who's winning? <laughs> it's like one day it's this, you know, um, and yeah, it's, very interesting times to look out at the world um, and see what's collapsing, what's and what's emerging, and mm. um, yeah, to balance that rebel energy within us, I think is also you know to use it to its best advantage. Um, yes, but but at the same time, not to follow blindly what the way that we've always been, um, which yeah. I think you know there's 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 a lot of um, structure in the world that doesn't want to go mm -hmm. and. And so, you know, while it might be a dance, it's definitely t a tension filled mm. piece because they're squaring each other. So it is very much this, this tenseness in trying to crack both sides open yeah. so that we can, you know, ultimately for the good, so we can um, move on in a, in a better way and hopefully um, do better with this earth that we live on, yeah. you know, because exactly. I don't know that it's sustained, we're, we're creating a sustainable world right now. No, and I think Mother Earth is talking loudly and we will we'll, we'll use that to go to talk about land. But we're recording this in uh, September 2022 um, and I believe we're going to be in this phase with Uranus and Saturn until about March 23. Is that about right? Um, well, actually, no. It's going to start getting a little bit. Um, so the, the three times last year um, Uranus and Saturn um um, squared off to the exact degree yeah. um, so that's a 90 degree angle and it's the most tense um, that you can find and they were at exact degrees that happened three times last year and the fourth time is about to happen at the beginning of October right. they're going to get within I think maybe half a degree of each other which yeah. when you look at um, in astrology um, 
around about an orb is about maybe six to eight degrees means that they can that they're they're right on each other right. so so we're talking exact so yeah. it's been a really tense time <laughs> but then they'll start moving apart so from october they'll start moving apart right. um and that will just that be, being that this has been a situation we've been living with for the last nearly two years mm -hmm. that will really fit we'll feel that release okay. yeah yeah yeah. Right. Something to look forward to, definitely. <laughs> there's, there's so much more. I know, I know. That's one piece. <laughs> yeah, it's a big picture. I mean, we're in big changing times yeah, at the moment. Absolutely. So I think super um, exciting that... times. Whenever oh. I get a little rattled, it's like, no, no, no. Remember, this is the most exciting uh, time in history the, the earth has ever had. And you chose to be here. So let's, you know. Let's focus on creating this beautiful new world full of love and light. Absolutely. I mean, I think there was a lot of us who had some kind of inkling of what might have been coming up at, 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 in the last few years um, who still had no idea that it was going to be so obvious. Yeah. You know, when you're working sort of like in those inner realms, everything seems to happen more subtly and energetically. But then the last few years have just been... <laughs> Okay. And, and those of us who've probably done a little bit of work were, um, it, it has been a bit gentler because we've kind of in some ways prepared to spend a lot of time with ourselves, spend a lot of time, yeah. you know, um, locked away um, in isolation. And it was actually for me, um, not a, it was quite beautiful the last yeah. couple of years. <laughs> I agree because I think we shared that with each other before that I'm also an introvert and okay. besides the fact there was a little freaked out because it was such an incredible thing that was happening once I was in lockdown I was happy as doing embroidery creating every day and I found it a little no more than a little I found it actually incredibly traumatic to go back out into the world again it was like uh, but that also taught me um, well, this is a, a beautiful segue into creating a new earth, the mother earth and being on land, because what that made me realize is just instead of labeling myself introvert, I learned to really honor it. And as we've come back out um, uh, into creating a new world, I am, of course, very interested in participating, but also honoring the fact that I personally need a lot of quiet space out in nature, connecting with the land, connecting with my garden connecting with the sun um, and I know that you have a really big affinity with land so please talk to us about that uh yeah I mean that was um I guess part of um part of going again finding out more about myself and the and what makes me tick I'm spending time as I think a lot of the indigenous cultures around the world have always done mm. just spending a lot of time um, by themselves quiet in nature it's amazing how loudly nature can speak to you mm. and can um, open um, and can give you answers about so many things um, but it requires you know a lot of um, space and time mm. and quietness um, and being and um, I just fell in love with the um, land in the in central Australia um, and the people there they, there's just so much um, to learn um, it, it's amazing what you get when you're quiet and you're on a piece of very powerful land um, just learning um, about how to be um, and how to be um, how to be with land and how alive land is i mean you know we, we we're, we're sitting on a planet that's a sentient being and it's only really when you allow yourself that time to walk um, in silence on the planet that you can really get a sense of the aliveness mm -hmm. that's actually underneath us and i think the words you use were just perfect because we always talk about speak about being in nature but for me it's being one with nature mm. There's a, um, there's a book that I um, got when I was out at Uluru and it's called I Am Uluru and it's about the Uluru family and what happened out there um, when white people um, um, colonised the Central Australia and that is exactly what it's about. They don't separate themselves from the land they're on. Mm. They are the land. There is no separation between humans and land or any kind of being. 
really it, we're we're all one and you get a, you get more of a sense of that in these places and with these people who know it to their yeah. core yeah mm. and through your journeys and you take groups of women out don't you but through these journeys you have um really started to build a relationship with the indigenous elders um yeah it it, it it's um it's amazing, actually. We, we When we first went out there, so I go on these trips with another um, friend of mine, Fiona Weatherhead, and um, we, we just started going out to land on different retreats and then were called to go to Uluru and um, had this intention of taking women there because we were already doing um, uh, work with groups of women. And then the, just the synchronicities that, that unfolded in us finding um, the right people and mm. and and you know just that it's it's quite incredible how it did unfold um and there we've sort of shared that in our in our podcast about about our trips out to Uluru but we now have um, um a family that are the traditional owners of some land there and you have to be invited to go onto a homeland yeah. Yeah. um and so they um during the course of the last four years that relationship's just built slowly and slowly and slowly mm. um as everything happens out there it's like they drip, drip feed you where you're what you're ready for yeah. we always think we're ready for more than what yeah. we are so it's yeah, yeah. it's been a, a total lesson in patience and waiting and knowing that um, there's something bigger than us that's that's guiding it um and so yes we're um next march is our is our trip out there and we're actually going out to homeland mm -hmm. with some of the traditional owners which will be amazing that just sounds yeah incredible so you've expressed and shared a little bit about what happens when you're on land and how how it's a very alive, magical, energetic, you know, vibrational kind of a place. Um, tell me a little bit how how that changes you and then when you come back into, I'll call it 3D world, you know, how you bring that with you or how you make that transition from being in this, amazing magical place to going back to real everyday life mm -hmm. gosh I remember the very first time I did that I went and um, I went on a it was called a um, a, a dragon line retreat and I went to the Flinders in Australia um, an, a, amazing um, a place called Arcarola and will be mm. a pound and um, it's this area that sits on about a kilometer deep of quartz um, crystal so the, the energy that you can feel it through your entire body and you're basically in these places that there's nobody there is nobody around you know you're just with your group and to be in convoy on a road trip with women and seeing the the vehicles and you know there was about I think six vehicles or four or six of us nothing else just red dust and and just driving for hours and hours and hours just to these remote places um, and and being there for a couple of weeks uh, and in the quiet, like no distractions. Mm. So you just spend so much time with the quietness and land and really exploring. Like I say, when you're in places like that, you explore so much of your inner world. Um, I remember driving back to Sydney and just every part of me going almost into a panic with the... Mm energy of the place the pace you could just yeah. feel it as you were driving back in but what became really clear to me um, in returning was this um just absolutely clear about what was really important and I just was seeing like I was seeing billboards for things and I was just it just hit me that we spend all our lives um doing these jobs that we then need to buy things in order to do these jobs and then we want to create these lives that gives us these tiny little pockets that we have on the weekends mm -hmm. um, just to feel like we can do something quickly before we've got to get back to work mm -hmm. which often becomes a distraction because we just want to you know fill up with alcohol or fill up with just fill our time up because we've got so little of it mm -hmm. only to go back to work um, to then earn the money to you know live in these big houses where we don't really it, it's just this this what I got a vision of was just these rats just running around or mice running around mm -hmm. and just not getting that they're on a treadmill mm -hmm. and it became just so clear and I just thought I just need to get off that treadmill mm -hmm. and I'll do whatever it takes to get off that treadmill and I don't know that I've ever 
um, worked at a job again in the traditional way mm. I, and and have you know I just thought okay if I'm going to do this then um, what do I need what do I need to survive and I've pared back my life um, because none of it's important it's mm. just it's that's what we it's what we spend our time making money in order to have things and if we didn't have things we could have time um, and so yeah that if from that very first trip my life's been about paring down to what's truly important so that I can spend more time doing the things that make me happy that bring me joy um, not keep me on that um, treadmill yeah. to make money for somebody else because we are making money for other people here more than we are for ourselves mm. <laughs> yeah because when you was yeah I've been since lockdown actually I've really I think for me, lockdown did a similar thing. And I know for many other people in the world, it did as well. It gave us time to reflect on what was important to us um, and what moving forward, what we want to create, what our lives want to, what we want in our lives, how we want to spend our time. Because when you're, you know, talking about the billboards and the advertising and the work and the drinking to numb ourselves on a Friday night, you know, before we, yeah, to wash off the week's um, stress, it's just insane. Conditioning. We are conditioned to be these, yeah, little rats on the wheel and live in an insane world that makes no right. sense at all. And, and Yeah, and so it was beautiful to see that that happened, like what had happened to me internally quite a few years before then started to happen for the world during the COVID, you yeah. know, when we were all forced to see people, you know, walking more. I mean, the walks that I used to go on on my own, I would go and drive to them and they would be packed and it was like, mm -hmm. oh, Wow. I mean, it's beautiful because people were getting out into nature and doing things that they didn't normally do. Yeah. Um, but then to hear um, businesses wanting to bring everybody back to the city, I mean, I was I was crying. Please don't let the planet go back yeah. to to, you know, the it, of course business wants you back because that's how they keep the machine going. Yeah. And it was just like and, and it's been beautiful to watch. Um, so many of our younger people just going, this is not the life that I want to lead. I exactly. don't want to lead the life that my parents have led and just yeah. spend all my time working for these little two days pockets of time yeah. where you're too stressed to do anything really. So, yeah, I think that this has been a humongous time for humanity yeah. and it may not all change as quickly as I would like it to, but it, we've definitely begun. Yeah, baby steps. And I think absolutely, you know, every time I hear another story about the great resignation, it's like, yes, there's another one, you know, that's made that really, really important choice. Um, yeah. And just I I like to reflect on um on the lockdown time because, you know, as you said, there was just such a sense of peace in the world, you know, with all that slowness, and you could walk in nature. And I think if you look at that collectively about what was going on, no wonder the world has changed and more light can come in and the energies can shift and our consciousness can shift because for once we were all being quiet and still. Yep. We were, we were all sent to our to to our rooms to mm. think about what we'd really done. <laughs> yeah, and I think it backfired, you know, because we came out stronger and we came out different and we came out clearer. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, just that break that the that the earth itself got to yeah. clean and, you know, the amount of butterflies and birds and yeah. wildlife that re re rejuvenated was yeah. amazing to see. The difference in the pollution was huge, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, great. Yes. But, but, but and that possibly gave us all a pause, but, you know, with so, it, so much further to go. I mean, yeah. the, the climate and what it's doing for everyone right now, it's just yeah. like we, you know. Well, Mother that... Earth is, is fighting back and she's speaking loudly. And we're really seeing that with the, um, the different weather events all around the world. Um, and it's, it's my, um, I want to say hope, but it's my intent. Uh, to you know really talk about being at one with the earth and um, and treating her with love and respect once again so that we grow together into a new world mm. yeah it was it's it's quite interesting because I, I've spent a lot of time just really um, with nature and and frustrated at what the, the changes that need to happen and and you know um what that means even to me as a consumer and how difficult it is to to make the right choices in this world i mean i do have some friends that are just incredible with the lengths that they'll go to to make the 
the the wisest decision and 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 I'm getting better at it but I still have a really long way to go um but and and I think that's the thing is that it's we're used to living in in this easy way you know where everything is just so um available to us and um it's going to take a big shift for that for that to change Mm. but it's so necessary absolutely and I think um as we kind of wind up our conversation, let's return to your art for a moment. Now, when you came back from that trip from um, uh, from Akarula and you felt that change and that realisation really, you know, clicked in and you made big career choices and lifestyle choices around it, how did your art change? What did you bring back from land that comes through? Mm, well, um Probably what happened for me art-wise, and this actually probably, I mean, was a developing thing, but actually this is probably what I got the most out of the time of lockdown, um, was that uh, there's a seriousness to me, me that really wants to change things in a big way on the planet. And what I got from being in lockdown was that creating art is that for me yeah (laughs) like I thought it was just you know I almost would push it away and think it's not serious enough Mm. and to have that realization that following your joy is actually possibly one of the most important things any of us can do um for me that's how we change the paradigm of um actually just following what really lights us up and putting um art out into the world that's that's um what really changed I think is that now um I put art at the centre rather than having it on the periphery, rather than it just being this thing that um, that um, I released. I then went, no, actually, this is my north mm-hmm. and this is my north star. And so everything else shifted around me putting that front and centre. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, that's kind of what I really want now for everyone is to find that thing that joy full place and how to reorient your life so that that can be front and center. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. Um, And similar to me, I felt my whole life was validated during lockdown because many, many people turned to the arts, you know, and the art store was still open because it was considered an essential, you know, uh, business and they were run off their feet and the craft stores were empty because everybody was creating and making things and really getting in touch with it. And so, yeah, first my first, first thought was, yes, my whole life has been now validated. <laughs> um, and the second thought was how beautiful that people are remembering what's important because I think in our world, you know, sports are given a lot of priority, um, you know, the logical mind, technology, and not that any of those things aren't valued or valuable, but arts are always put on the side. Oh, yeah, and here's our token little bit of money or whatever grants for the arts. And I would like to see a world where the arts take their rightful place and are front and centre. Um, and however you, you know, express your, I call it spiritual creativity, um, is your gift to the world. Yeah, finding your joy and valuing it and owning it and making priority for it, putting it first absolutely yeah that's right that's right putting it first mm. front and center yeah <laughs> I'm there yeah. with you no more little you know once a month hiding you know an hour here or there it's like no let's work out what's really important for each of us and how that expression plays out in the world and really honor it and value within ourselves because as um you know artists like you and I set that intent for our lives it sets it shows a It shows others how they can do it. And I think that that gift alone, just by being me and following what's right for me and being authentic and expressing that, sharing my knowledge and skills with others, talking to like-minded people like you, it's all important, um, yeah, to show others how to do it, lead the way. Yeah, and also to give permission. Somehow or other, we all kind of need to be given permission to do these things, which... Um, is odd but it's true (laughs) it is but that ties beautifully into breaking down that conditioning isn't it this is all intertwined in it art's a little part-time thing you do and you know on the side it is not and you know crystal one of the things about soul paint that I love is that um we give permission to paint with your hands and to see the joy in someone's face 
when you tell them, no, 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 you can just put it on your hands yeah. and put it onto the canvas. At that permission, it's just like, oh, wow, I haven't done that since I was a child. Yeah. But isn't it funny that we just think that that's something that we need to stop doing yeah. because we're no longer kids? Yeah, yeah. And for me, uh, that's one of the gifts that Louise Fletcher gave me in uh, Finding Your Joy because right at the beginning, me, Miss Prim and Proper, must colour within the lines, I was painting with my fingers and it came up naturally you know the brush got thrown on the floor and the painting just came with my fingers and then the movement in my body and one of the first times when uh, the assignment was you know to dance with music when I'd finished my my image I danced the painting into my body and I mm. have never done anything like that before it took it, yeah, it just took me to another level of integration um, and yeah. being grounded. And it was just magical. And so I would never have painted with my fingers unless she had, you know, talked about being free and expressive and just make marks. Um, and it was. It was a truly liberating and freeing experience. It changed me in a big way. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, it is really quite beautiful to watch um, how people can be changed through these through these simple things. I mean, music a, a, is a big part of, of soul paint to get you into whatever energetic um, place where we're asking you to go. So we use um, drumming or drum tracks or yeah. um, different types of music. And, and that in itself can just change your state of mind to, mm. to um, get out of your head and, and create in a different way. Yeah. And I think creating with our fingers is just really that primal um, I don't want to say childhood because we allow our children to do it and then we cut it off, but it is this primal way of connecting with the earth, isn't it? Using our fingers, you know, scraping in the dirt. It, it's exactly that same feeling of connection and freedom. Yeah, and something that we do in soul pain is we always get the colour of whatever the week is and we put it on our skin because there's something about that too, right? Just yeah. kind of really embodying yeah. that. Um, and I know a lot of people that have been on soul pain are just like, I I want to go further in terms of painting and body. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, that'll be something that we'll put into it one day in a, yeah. in a, in a much more conscious way. Well, that explains your beautiful head, headshot that you sent me with the coloured coloured splotches all over your face, which everybody will see in the thumbnail. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that'll make sense now. Yeah, that's great. So anything else you'd like to share with us before we wrap it up? Uh, no, I think um, I think I feel really complete. That was um, a beautiful chat. I thank you for inviting me on, so I can share a little bit about my my world and soul paint and going to land. Yeah, well, thank you. You have just I just find you the most fascinating, amazing artistic woman, and I love what you're doing in the world. And I actually feel really privileged to have met you. Um, and that we've had this wonderful conversation. So well, and I can't wait to see your first piece of really ugly embroidery. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's see if I can do it. I don't know. <laughs> Stay tuned, everyone. I'll post on social if I actually can force myself to do an ugly embroidery. But, um, all right. So I'll put all of Denny's details in um, underneath the video. So if you would like to contact her and work with her, if you're interested in... Um, have you got room for people in March if they want to go out to land with you? Uh, we do. We, we, we're about half full for March and there's yeah. still spaces left for soul paint. So yeah, and I'll soul give paint you the two. And starting soon though, isn't it? Uh, Mid-October. Mid-October. So you've got October. about a month. So yeah. we're in mid-September. Uh, mid and if you would like to, if you feel called to that, then have a look at um, at your website, isn't it, with all the details yeah, I'll get, I'll um, send you the details, Crystal, so you can put it with it. Yeah, beautiful. And you can also purchase um, some of uh, Danny's beautiful um, ad abstract expression of art if that uh, if that speaks to you. So there's lots of ways you can connect. And if you would like to connect with me, then I would love to work with you as well. So thank you so much, um, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks. Bye.